Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today I'm venturing to territory that we don't normally go to, and that's the world of wireless audio. The reason I'm doing that is because the Bayer Dynamic Aventho headphones that we're reviewing today have a bit of a unique feature that's particularly of interest to me. So let's get on with the review and I hope you enjoy it. So these are the Bayer Dynamic Aventho headphones. They retail for about $600, which is a fair price. Um, in fact, probably more than a fair price for a pair of small portable headphones. But what makes them special is that they actually have a hearing calibration function. And that means that these can be tuned to your exact hearing profile. Any sensitivities that you have to certain frequencies, any hearing loss that you might have, these will adjust for it and make the sound just right for you. So that made me very interested. I've got a background in uh, speech pathology and audiology. And so anything that has a specific understanding of hearing always gets my interest. The, uh, the event those also pick up on the fact that I've always loved the design of Bayer's portable headphones. I used to have a pair of the DT1880s and I've always loved both the, the comfort, but also the look and the feel of those headphones. And the event those take that design and improve on it further. There's beautiful soft leather, plenty of metal and the plastics they use are really high quality. Um, they're a robust, solid design that I think looks great uh, and they're available in black and brown for those that have a preference. This is the brown pair with the brown leather. In terms of the general features and accessories, the Eventhos come with a, a simple carry pouch. Now, I've said in my written review of this, I was a bit unimpressed with the carry pouch, not because it's fabric, that's fine. The fabric's actually really good because it, it squashes flat when the headphones aren't in there. It doesn't take up excess space. What I don't like is that the headphones have no protection from one another. When it's shipped to you, there's a piece of foam between the ear cups, sitting like so. But there's no way on day-to-day -day use that I'm gonna replace this piece of foam every single time I wanna put the headphones away. And what that means is that when they're in the bag, the headphones are actually free to rub against one another. And in time, and in fact, it's already begun to happen to this pair, in time, there is gonna be an abrasion mark on the side of the headphones. And I think that's a real shame. The solution to this, of course, is that they're either on your head and you're listening to them, or you wear them around your neck the rest of the time, like so. Now on the headphones themselves, there's a few things worth noting. Down the bottom of the right ear cup, there's a, uh, a cable connection, so you can actually use these as a cabled headphone. If you do that though, they're going to be a very basic, what I'd call a dumb headphone. None of the smart features, the hearing calibration, the, um, the touch controls, none of that will actually work with the cable. So do keep that in mind if you're thinking of using these wired. They sound fine, they just don't have the smart features. So there's the cable connection, there's obviously a power button down there, there's an indicator light which shows you when the, the headset is on, when it's in pairing mode, etc. And there's also a USB-C charging port. The uh, battery life on these is fantastic. I had full days of listening with commuting to and from work as well as some time in the office and they generally were still around 60% towards the end of the day. So there's plenty of battery life in these, you'll have no problems getting whole days, many days in fact out of them. The other thing I mentioned was the touch controls. So on the right ear cup, you can actually control the headphones when using Bluetooth, not cable, but Bluetooth only. You can control the headphones by swiping forwards and backwards for skipping or seeking in tracks and up and down for the volume. You can also double tap to play and to pause. So it's a really nice feature that means you're not digging in your pocket for your smartphone or whatever your device is. You're just having to touch the side of your head where, you, where your headphones are. I personally found that to be a really useful and valuable feature. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of cabled headphones for the, the quality that they provide, um, but I must say I'd be happy to let go of having that little tiny bit of extra sound quality for the sake of the convenience that a headphone like the Aventhe provides. In terms of comfort, these are an on-ear headphone rather than an over-ear headphone. That keeps them nice and compact, but it does mean they're pressing on the side of your head and onto your ear. Um, personally, I found that anything up to about an hour, these are pretty comfortable. After or close to an hour, I did find I'd have to adjust them a little bit, but it was, it was very minor, the discomfort, and just a small adjustment of the pressure points very, very quickly made them comfortable again. So comfort-wise, I'd say they're also very, very good. So let's talk about the hearing calibration because realistically that's why you'd buy the event those. At $600 you're not going to buy them because they're a great sounding Bluetooth headphone on their own. It has to be the, the hearing calibration that takes them to that next level price wise. 
The way the hearing calibration works is it is an app that you download on your smartphone. The app takes you through a very short, simple process of pressing a button when you hear the sound and letting it go when you don't. Within a couple of minutes, you've done your left ear test and then your right ear test, and you have a fully custom hearing profile just for your hearing sensitivities and hearing loss. And what that means is that your pair of Eventhos are uniquely tuned to suit your hearing. That to me is a really valuable feature. It makes these worthwhile. The difference is noticeable. I don't have any significant hearing loss based on what I heard between the pre and post listening to these headphones, um, but it did make a difference. So there's obviously some slight adjustments and therefore probably some slight hearing loss or hearing sensitivity on my part, but it wasn't night and day. For some people though, this is going to be a big difference. If you've got any significant high frequency hearing loss from being in loud environments, listening to loud music too much, or just general aging, you'll find that these can compensate for that beautifully. It's a simple process. You don't have to fiddle with levels and adjustments. It just does it for you. And it's all done in a couple of minutes. The other thing that's really nice about the app is that it gives you a report on how much work your ears are doing through the day. If you've been listening for three to four hours and let's say at, at fairly high volumes, you can jump into the app and it's gonna tell you how much work your ears have been doing out of a 100% scale. Now 100% means at that point you're gonna start doing damage to your ears. So it's a really nice checkpoint if you do like to listen a bit louder, it's a nice checkpoint to know are you safe or are you doing damage? And then you can just pull back the volume a little bit and either give yourself longer to listen or just general good hearing health. I promised in the written review that I'd also share a recording of the voice for these. Um, it's a little thing, but I really enjoy switching on the event those and hearing them tell me that they're powered on, they're connected to my device, and the battery level that's left because it's enunciated so clearly by the person that's done the voiceovers. I'll, uh, I'll try and capture a recording so you can have a listen. Power on, battery 80%. Obviously, you can have all the gimmicks in the world, all of the features in the world, but ultimately, these are headphones. They need to sound good. So let's have a chat about the sound. Thanks to the calibration of these, they're able to deliver a really balanced, neutral sound signature. The bass, the mid, the treble are all really well balanced with one another. Nothing takes over, nothing pushes forwards in front of anything else. But the overall result is a really enjoyable and relaxed listening experience. And I don't mean relaxed as in rolled off and smooth. There's nothing you've got to work to overcome when you're listening to the headphones. Everything's just laid out there perfectly for you. The mid-range is extremely clear, beautifully focused, obviously dead center because it's taking into account if you've got any difference between your right and left levels of hearing. Everything's perfectly precisely focused for your listening. The one knock I would have against these is that they're so neutral that they don't always have me tapping my foot or, or nodding my head along to the music. And that's probably because they haven't given it any coloration inside the bass. Um, in the written review I've done, I've compared these to the Think Sound On One. And I must say that the Think Sound On One does have that better sense of groove that these probably lack. And I think it's because there's a little bit of extra bass added. Now, is that bass accurate and natural? I'm not sure, I personally prefer it, but I know that there'll be a lot of people out there that actually appreciate how very, very neutral the event those are, and I love them. But don't get me wrong when I say that I'm not bopping along to them, it doesn't mean that I haven't enjoyed every single moment that I've listened to these. So the bass is extremely neutral and clean, it's fast, it's tight, it's punchy. Personally, I would just like it to have a little bit of extra body. I've already mentioned how crystal clear the mids are, and then let's talk about the treble. The treble for me is probably, if there's such a thing as a weak spot for these, because they're very, very, very good. But if there is a weak spot, it's that the treble is not quite perfect. And that is that the treble is not quite crystal clear. And what I mean by that is if I was comparing it to a top-notch wired headphone, it's not quite as perfect as that can be. Um, and that's gonna come down purely to the fact that it's a Bluetooth headphone. Um, the Aptex HD format of Bluetooth uses a small amount of compression, so it's a four to one compression ratio. Nothing like going from a CD quality recording to MP3, um, but it is still slightly degrading the quality of the sound. And I, I believe that comes through in the, in the treble not being absolutely crystal clear. It's still excellent, it's detailed, it's well extended with no roll off, but at the same time, it's never sibilant. So it's a great treble, it's really enjoyable, it's just not up there with the absolute best of the best wired setups. And nor could it be, no matter how well they did it, if the signal's not perfect, the output can't be perfect. So at $600, it's gonna be a serious decision whether or not to buy a pair of headphones like this. 
I think when you're making your mind up, you really need to consider the value of the hearing calibration. There's not a lot of headphones on the market that do it. There are plenty of other headphones on the market that have great Bluetooth, good functions, good designs, but not that many that wrap together everything that the event though offers. It looks great, it's very comfortable, it's sturdy, it's compact, and it does hearing calibration as well. Um, I personally think they're a fantastic offering. If I was in the market for a pair of portable headphones, these would be very, very high on my list. And I certainly would highly recommend them. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for future reviews. We've got a couple of interesting reviews coming up on the Metza Audio 99 Neo headphones and a very interesting cable review of the Burson Audio Cable Plus RCA cables. So uh, do hit the subscribe button and stay in touch with us for future reviews. As always, happy listening and thanks for watching Passion for Sound.